Alan Davidson Oval was the venue for the under-24s Frank Ray Shield finals between Lane Cove and Warringah. After a light warm-up session with bat and ball, the pre-match ceremony got underway, with Warringah winning the toss and electing to bat. Sales. Yeah, we'll have a stick there, buddy. It uh, looks pretty, pretty good deck. Very, very hard and flat, so looking forward to it. With Lane Cove losing the last two consecutive finals and Warringah not having won the trophy since the Shield started back in 1987, both teams were hungry to win and the crowd in for an exciting day of the cricket. Lane Cove continued their dominance throughout the summer by picking up two early wickets, removing Christensen, then the captain McMillan to this brilliant catch. Warringah's defence came in the form of attack, with both Hurley and Brendel getting into the action with some quick boundaries, before Lanko showed once again why they were the team to beat. Holt removing Hurley for 22 with a superb in swinging Yorker. Milne steadied the ship Warringah, scoring 40 runs, which included three boundaries, before Burke and Grobola made a 64 run partnership, bringing Warringah's total to 6 for 166 after 46 overs. Hinksman became Richardson's third victim after being bowled cheaply, bringing Valentine to the crease to set out the final overs. He belted 15 off the last over at a strike rate of over 200, which included this massive six. Get over! Waringa finished the 50 overs with a respectable total of 8 for 197. I think we did pretty well out there. Uh, obviously we had a good start, had 3 or 4 for early on. Um, in saying that, they got 200, I probably would have taken it at the start of the day because it's a really good batting deck out there. We're going to have to bat 50 overs to get the runs, uh, it's all up to our batting now. I'm not going to say I'm confident either way, uh, if we bat well enough we'll win the game, it's as simple as that. We were in a bit of trouble early at 4 for not many. We came back really well through the middle, boys showed good ticker. We bowl straight, um, get a couple of wickets early especially. Um, I think we should keep them down hopefully at about 160, 170 I think. That might be a good target. Crowd attendance lifted by the afternoon to watch the conclusion of the finals. Some opting for the vantage points while others wanted to be part of the excitement. Lane Cove didn't disappoint the crowd, scoring at the required run rate with some magnificent boundaries. Southcott did most of the damage as he reached his half century, bringing Lanko closer to the trophy which has evaded them for the last two years. Warringah's hopes for victory looked all but over as Lanko cruised to 3 for 143 until McMillan decided to bring Edgell back into the attack with immediate success, bowling the Danger Man for 52. what can only be described as phenomenal, the green men's team spirit and never say die attitude sparked a major collapse in the Cove's middle order, losing five wickets in just 28 balls, including two runouts. With Lane Cove needing 28 or 30 with two wickets in hand, they never recovered as Warringah took home the Frank Rachel finals for the first time in 17 years, beating Lane Cove by two runs in the final over.